Hey everyone, welcome to this new workflow editing video for Topaz Labs. This photo that I'm gonna edit is a companion of sorts to an article that I wrote on the Learning Center where I share four tips on how to get better street photography. And I'll leave a link to that article in the description below. So I love street photography. I think it's a very important genre uh, overall in photography because it's, in my opinion, the practice of capturing moments that 99.9% .9 of people would overlook, not see as anything special, but a photographer kind of sees this still shot, this moment in time, and nabs it with their camera. And so in the article, if you read it, I mentioned a series that I did several years ago when I went back home to visit uh, my family and go to an expo in New York City. Uh, this is in Chinatown uh, in Manhattan. And um, I created the series called Chinatown at Dusk. And again, read the article and I'll explain more of the reasons behind that series, um, how I went about creating it and why I think it's important for uh, readers and, and viewers of this video to consider doing something similar. So we're going to talk about the editing here because one of the things that I talk about in the article is the importance of creating kind of a cohesive look um, to the series. So I'm going to walk you through how I edit this photo and get it to a place where it kind of has that cohesive look with the other photos in the series. And you can see most of them in the article again, which again is linked below. So here I have this photo. This is a raw file. I took this with the Sony A9 camera back in 2017, October 2017. Um, it's a full resolution raw file. I used a Sony Loxia, I'm sorry, not a Sony, a Zeiss Loxia uh, 35 millimeter F2 lens. Um, it's a very small prime lens, but it's very powerful. And um, you can see the information as far as the exposure. This was pretty much wide open at f2, 1 30th of a second, and uh, ISO 500. So it's a bit uh, of a higher resolution because this was towards the end of the evening. This is 6.20 p.m. Uh, in October. Towards the end of October, we're nearing winter, which means that the days are shorter and the light um, kind of diminishes more rapidly. So, or earlier rather, I should say, not more rapidly. But... If we zoom in here, you can see a few things. First, um, you can see noise um, throughout the image, um, just kind of throughout. If you look at any of the darker flat areas, you can see noise. This is more of a luminance noise. It's not a color noise, um, so that's good. But also you can see, because I was hand-holding, even uh, though I was at ISO 500, my shutter speed was foolishly 1 30th of a second. I really should have... Um, increase my ISO some more and drop that uh, shutter speed uh, a little bit more. But the reason why I didn't uh, in this particular case is because I was trying to get any motion. So and not emotion, but motion. So this pedestrian here was walking by and that's something that I really like. One, there's a nice contrast between uh, these two cooks over here, especially with this guy is holding his cigarette in this really cool way. Um, but this is the way this pedestrian is walking through. I don't care about these guys here and I'm going to crop them out in a minute, but I just wanted to show you, uh, what, uh, just my rationale here. Now, because this is a raw file and I know it's noisy, I'm actually going to go ahead and, uh, send the raw file to denoise AI because if you are working with a raw file that is noisy and you send it to denoise AI, you can use the raw model. Um, which is very powerful because it'll use all of the sensor data to get an even better noise reduction result. So here's how I do this. And I've done videos on this before. Um, you can check it out on our channel. You can also find the article. In fact, I'll link to the article in, um, in the description. But to send a raw file from Lightroom Classic, and it's important, I'm talking about Classic, not the Lightroom desktop app. Um, I right click and then I go to show and finder. What that does is it opens up the um, the image right here, and this is the raw file. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag it onto the Denoise AI icon that I have in my dock, and then I'm going to let go. And you can see we automatically have the raw model selected over here, um, and I'm using the uh, auto settings for the model parameters, and if we click and let go, you can see that it's just kind of, you know, a little noisy, and when you let when you let go, it's clean. We can zoom in even tighter to get a closer look, and 
there, you can see how there's that noise, especially you see um, in this air, like these, uh, the, the panes over here, there's all that noise. And also on the cook's face, it's noisy, but when you let go, it's perfectly clean. And so that's really all I'm going to do in um, over here with denoise. I will send it to sharpen later on because as you can see there, it could be just a little bit sharper, um, the overall image. So I'm going to click on save image here. And uh, what I'm going to do is make sure that I have preserve input settings selected. And that's going to automatically save a DNG file. So if you open a raw file, a supported raw file into denoise AI and you have this switch toggled on, we'll save a DNG. If you disable it, you can choose your image format. So you can still save a DNG if you want, but just having that on automatically does it. And I also want to make sure that the output directory is the source directory so that that DNG file will be placed in the same directory as uh, the raw files located. So I'm going to click save image here and let denoise do its thing. And we can quit denoise. And there you can see there is that DNG file uh, that we just created. So now that we're, we have the DNG file created, what I'm going to do is open up the library browser here and I'm going to go to this folder. This is the, the folder that um, the original file is located. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go to synchronize folder. It's going to say, oh, okay, Lightroom's like, I see one photo that is in the folder in Finder, but it's not in Lightroom. So Clicking synchronize will bring that photo into the Lightroom catalog, which is great. And now if we go here, you can see we have two images. Um, we have the original raw file. You can see that it's the raw file because the .arw, that is Sony's raw format. And then we have the DNG, which is the Adobe uh, raw format of sorts. Um, so let's go ahead just to show you, I'm gonna select both of them. Again, raw is on the left. This is the original RAW, this is the DNG, and as you can see, it's pretty much identical, um, other than the fact that we now have no noise, but color and tone are pretty much identical. So if you're worried about that, don't, because it's you're in good shape there um, with the DNG file. All right, so now we have the DNG file. Now it's time to uh, start editing. Now you might be asking, well, Brian, why didn't you, uh, you know, crop for example with a raw file? Well, that's because, um, anything you do in Lightroom to a raw file, you're not actually doing anything to the raw file itself. You are, um, writing changes to a sidecar file where those, that's where the changes are, um, being made. So even if I crop this raw file first and sent it to, um, Denoise AI, Denoise would not see any of the changes I made. So that's why the ver if you want to apply noise reduction to a raw file, before you do anything, any white balance, anything, just uh, send the raw file to Denoise AI um, because Denoise will not take into account any edits you make first. So here, this is kind of our new starting point. So let's go to develop. First thing I'm gonna do is scroll down here and enable profile correction and we preserve all of the metadata. So um, because it's a DNG, uh, you can apply this lens correction profile and it automatically detects it. As you can see, it's the Zeiss Loxia 35.2. Um, and then I'm gonna take the dropper here for white balance and I'm just gonna click on the Cook's apron. Nothing special, but as you can see, it did a nice job of uh, getting rid of that tone. If I undo, you can see it's, there's this kind of like blue tone and that could be from the ambient lights but here we have kind of a nice warmer tone. Now I'm gonna go ahead and press uh, R to crop. This is the crop tool. And I'm just gonna go ahead with my lock enabled, making sure that I'm uh, respecting the original aspect ratio. And I'm gonna uh, bring it in a little bit here and position it. I'm just gonna check and that's, now I'm committing a faux pas, depending on who you talk to. Some people say it's a faux pas to um, have any side of the composition uh, bisect any major joints. So what I mean by that, you see this pedestrian here, down here is her ankle. And so 
it's really not good. It's not, it's kind of doesn't look right to kind of cut it at a joint, which is why I'm moving the composition or the crop box a little bit higher. So it's kind of almost through her shin. Um, and it doesn't look as bad here. And so all I'm doing is I'm fine tuning the composition so that the cook is more or less center, but kind of more to the right third. I'm going to rotate this a little bit um, because I was at a little bit of an angle and just fine tuning. And this is kind of how I work on my compositions, looking at vertical and horizontal lines to make sure that they're uh, rectilinear. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this out a little bit. And that looks good. Now, this looks like a nice balanced photo. You have a pedestrian who's moving and then you have two kind of static people and you've got this guy right here. I don't mind so much that part of the uh, this person's bag um, is showing. Street photography has a lot of forgiveness, in my opinion, in terms of whether you have a clean composition or not. Really what people want, you want people to kind of focus on a specific thing. So I'm not so worried about that. So we've got the composition dialed in now, so meaning the actual framing is done. Uh, we got white balance and we have lens correction enabled. Now I'm going to go ahead and apply some tone correction. So I'm going to open up the exposure a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up the shadows and the black point. And uh, let's bring out the highlights. It's getting a little too hot, as you can see here. So I'm going to bring that down a little bit. Now, I, I mentioned this in almost every video that where I share my editing workflow. I don't really ever touch the contrast slider because I prefer applying an S-curve for my contrast. And the way that you apply an S-curve is you want to make sure that you are on this icon, which is the point curve, not the parametric curve, uh, or the color channels. You want this icon here. And then you drop three points, one at this intersection, that's your highlights, one dead center for your midpoints, and one over here at this intersection, which is shadows. And to apply an S-curve, you just take the highlight dot or point, bring it up, take the shadow dot, bring that down, and I'm going to bring it down quite a ways. And then the midpoint, I bring it kind of up to the left a little bit to open up the midpoints. Now, in the article, I mentioned that one of the more popular kind of techniques, it's, it's not even that popular anymore, but it, it has been popular for several years, is to give your photo this kind of antique vintage look. And the way that you do that is by taking the black point and turning it to a slight gray. And the way that you do that is you take your black point, which is automatically over here, click it, and then just drag straight up. So watch, if I go up like this, you see how all the black in the image is starting to turn gray until it gets white. If you this, basically what I did here is I took the black point and I made it parallel with the white point, which I don't want. All you really need to do is just bring it up just a little bit. So until you start to see the shadow. So look at this pedestrian here. And on, as soon as you start to see her fade, which is right there, you don't want to go too much more because that's, in my opinion, a bit too heavy. But if you just go just a little bit, like right around there, maybe even just a tiny bit more there. Um, that you get that vintage look and you can see if we d disable the tone curve, just how flat it is. That's this effect is solely from the tone curve. We did nothing else. And that's contrast. You can see here's kind of a flat looking image and here's a much contrastier image. And I like that. It's really kind of deep and punchy. I think it looks good and, it, and it's getting close to the cohesive look of the rest of the images in my Chinatown at dusk uh, series. So uh, what I'm going to do now is go to the color grading. So back in the day, Lightroom only had two of these. It didn't have this mid-tone. It was called split, split toning because you only had your highlights and your shadows. Um, now you have all three. And I'm going to show you how I use uh, color grading. I start with the highlights and I take this center dot and I bring it all the way out. And what this does is it shows you, um, it basically you're changing the color value or the hue of the highlights in the image. And here we're basically showing what the color will look like at 100% saturation. And if I go around, you can see what it looks like throughout. And so I'm going to put this more towards a warmer tone somewhere around here. And then to fine tune it, 
with the cursor in this circle here, I'm gonna press and hold the shift key and you can see this line up here. If I let go, the line goes away. By pressing and holding the shift key, I can go in and out without worrying about going left or right. So if I don't have it and I try to go in and out, sometimes you can kind of veer to the left and the right and you don't want that. So I start at 100%, I press and hold the shift key and then I bring it to zero and then I slowly bring it out. And I'm looking at the image and when I get to that place where I like the way it looks, I let go. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with the shadows. And typically what I like to do is use complementary colors. So this is more kind of a orangey yellow and a complementary color would be something in the blue region. So just like before, I'm gonna take this dot, bring it out to the center or out to the edge and I'm gonna move it around. And I like this right here. So I'm gonna press and hold the shift key bring this back to center and start bringing it out somewhere around there. Now you can also do a, a mid-tone color grade, same basic principle, bring it out. Um, and this is gonna obviously affect the mid-tones. So just kind of like that. And then I'm gonna take the balance slider and the balance slider essentially lets you bias your color grading towards, um, if you go to the left, it'll uh, bias it towards the shadows. And if you go to the right, it'll bias it towards the highlights. So watch if I take this balance slider to the left, you see how more of that uh, color grading for the shadow appears. And if I go to the right, it goes more towards the warmer tones. And so I actually want it somewhere right around here, biasing it more a little bit towards the highlights. Um, and so that's looking really good. I'm really happy with that. Um, and then overall, if we turn this off, you can see how it just adds a nice little color grade to the image. Now I'm mostly done with the stylization, but I wanna apply sharpening now. And to do that, I'm gonna use Sharpen AI. Before I send the image to Sharpen AI, the first thing I want to do is take the sharpening in Lightroom, which it sometimes defaults to 40, and I'm gonna bring that to zero. I don't want any sharpening applied uh, before I send to Sharpen AI. Next, I'm gonna right click on the image, go to Edit In and select Topaz Sharpen AI. And then I'm just gonna keep it as a JPEG. I always use JPEG when I'm doing these videos and then I'm gonna click edit to send it over. All right, now that I am in Sharpen AI, I'm gonna to go to the comparison view to open up a kind of a four up view where I can com compare four different models at once. Let's go ahead and I'm just gonna zoom in to 150% and put the focus box on the cook. And I actually like the way out of focus blurry, very blurry looks. Um, if you let, or if you click in the quadrant, you can see the original and how it kind of snaps into place. Um, the other ones are okay, but this one gives me a nice clean result. So I'm gonna double click on it to open it in the one up view and then zoom to fit. And so now I'm just gonna click and to see the original, to see if uh, there are any issues, any areas that I want to mask out. And so clicking and letting go, I don't see any issues from over sharpening. In fact, the text uh, on the signs here look so much sharper. Here's the original. Even here, like this truck loading only, that's the original. You see how it's kind of soft and out of focus? And now it's really sharp. Um, so uh, everything just has n a, a bit more detail to it, which I'm happy about. And so now that I am done with that, I'm gonna click on apply to return back to Lightroom. And this is our sharpened image. Let me go to the grid view for a second. So you can see this is our original raw file. This was our uh, DNG file that was sent to Denoise AI. And then we cropped and applied our stylization. As you can see, obviously they're very different looking images. And then now we have the exact same image just with Sharpen AI applied. Now, just a few final things, little touches. We'll go back to the develop module here. I'm gonna to go to the masking tool and select a radial gradient. Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just put it kind of over the, um, the cook here. Because what I want to do is uh, draw the eye. I'll turn the overlay off. I wanna draw the eye really to the cook. He's kind of my focal point for the image. And the best way to do that, I could apply a vignette, a post crop vignette, but post crop vignettes darken uh, the outer edges of the image evenly. Basically it starts evenly from the outer four corners and it just goes towards the center of the frame. But this guy is not in the center of the frame, he's more towards the right. 
So to create what I call a custom vignette, using a radio filter, I can take the exposure slider and kind of bring it like this. Now you might be wondering, oh, why he's getting darker. And that's because the radio filter is, the selection is of the cook. We don't want that. We want to actually go to the radio gradient here, click on the ellipse and click on invert. And that flips it. And so now you can see how we're kind of darkening the rest of the image. Uh, you can control things like the feather. So if I wanted to make it a super tight feather, which is terrible, you can do that. But this essentially co controls the transition. And so we can, if you want to make it pronounced, you can do that and then further refine your selection so that it's not as obvious. So here you can see how he kind of pops off the screen. If it's too much, you can brighten it. But that is the way that I like to apply a custom vignette. And with that, I can go ahead, add a little bit of clarity and a little bit of texture to the image. Now, these are things I do at the very end. I don't typically do these um, towards the beginning because these are these can affect the, um, the performance. Let's say you apply clarity and texture before sending it to Sharpen AI. That can affect the performance of the AI models. So I like to do this at the end. But this is basically it. Um, this is what I would consider a final result. And so if we were to take um, these two images here and compare them, now, uh, obviously the, um, let's go to lights out mode. Obviously the composition, the crop is different, but you can see how I was able to get a very unique style. And if you go back to the article, um, you'll see the other images from the series and you'll see that they share a very similar punchy cross-processed um, or split toned look. And that is very intentional. So I hope uh, this video inspires you to get out and get some street photos under your belt. Don't forget, if you want to download free trials of Denoise AI and Sharpen AI and Gigapixel AI, head over to topazlabs.com. You can download a free trial that never expires. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot.